back of my head. Sure. But I felt a body right. press against my back. But there was no grabbing, like nobody that he didn't like grab your waist or grab your No, arms, not at all. No. Nothing like that. Nothing. Actress and entrepreneur Gwyneth Paltrow testifying in her own defense last night in a trial over a 2016 skiing accident in Utah. Terry Sanderson accuses the Emmy winner of crashing into him while they were skiing on a mountain, leading to brain damage and broken ribs. Sanderson also claims Paltrow and her instructor didn't stick around after the collision to help him. He's seeking at least $300,000 in damages from the Goop founder. Paltrow, meanwhile, in a countersuit, claims Sanderson skied into her. Her suit is asking for a symbolic $1 and attorney fees. Legal correspondent Julia Janae with our partner network Court TV has been following the case closely from Park City, Utah. She has more details for us tonight. On Friday, Gwyneth Paltrow testified with poise, some humor, but she was unequivocal throughout her two hours of testimony that she was not the one who skied into the plaintiff in this case. But after her testimony, there were some lingering questions about a noise she allegedly made at the time of that collision in 2016. I froze when he slid between my skis. I absolutely froze and I don't remember yelling or screaming until I was very angry. You were furious and said you skied directly into my back Sorry. at the top of your lungs. Yes, I did. Okay. I apologize for my bad language. On the stand, Paltrow first denies that she ever screamed. Then when answering questions from her own attorney, she seemed less sure. It's impossible that I let out a noise upon being hit because it was a very slow move. It wasn't an impact. The impact came when we fell on the ground. So it's very possible that when the impact was made, I screamed. But I do not recall making a sound until we were falling or on the ground. Plaintiffs and their sole eyewitness claim that she let out a scream before the impact. She hits him right directly in the back. The ski instructor with Paltrow from Deer Valley Resort wrote this in the incident report, quote, I didn't see it, but I heard her scream on the way down. I skied directly to her. The man, plaintiff Terry Sanderson, was behind her, agreeing that Paltrow was not the party at fault. I was skiing and looking downhill as you do and I was skied directly into by Mr. Sanderson. Now Sanderson is going to take the stand next. He's going to testify that he heard a hysterical scream like King Kong in the moments before the impact and that he lost consciousness. Not too long after that, Paltrow's family is traveling here to testify as witnesses once this case passes to the defense. Reporting in Park City, Utah, Julia Janae, Court TV. And joining us live now to discuss this further is criminal defense attorney and legal analyst Lou Shapiro. Lou, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Wanted to start off by asking you, how did you think Gwyneth Paltrow handed her, handled herself on the stand? Well, clearly she did well, uh, but there's no surprise because she is an actress. Uh, but that's not to say that what she's saying is disingenuous, but certainly you know, anyone looking at her testimony is going to be a little bit more skeptical, a little bit more critical, saying, you know, despite the fact that she's an actress, is she credible? And I think what we have to look at in a case like this is what other witnesses are saying. Do they corroborate uh, what she's saying? The more that there is consistency going her way, the more likely she's going to prevail in this case. And it seems like so far what we've been presented is there are other people who are backing up her version of the events. And both her and Sanderson brought in a witness who was there at the time of the incident. How do these witnesses impact the trial and, and what does their testimony you know, have to say so far? It's kind of a he said, she said, but they, they both have somebody that's backing them up. Right, so I think what it's going to come down to is uh, in order to find somebody culpable, there needs to be proof beyond a what's called a preponderance of the evidence, more than a 50% standard, more than a coin toss, if you will. And if you have witnesses on both sides, both saying things in favor of each party, then it makes it all the more unlikely for a plaintiff to prevail. It puts Gwyneth Paltrow in a very good position in a case like this versus a criminal case where it's proof beyond a reasonable doubt. All Paltrow has to show is that it could have gone either way. And if it could have gone either way, then it's not my fault, I'm off the hook and I'm not liable for these damages that are being asked of me. And a missing GoPro video is now being targeted in this trial. Will you explain and, and how big of a deal is this missing video? Well, this is exactly the kind of case where we would like a video to show who hit who 
uh, who caused this collision, who's at fault. And when we don't have a video like that, we are left to rely on what people said that happened in a very fast and unexpected manner. And remember, two people can look at the same situation and see things very differently depending on their vantage point, depending on how fast they were going, where they were coming from. Memories can play tricks on us. It's not as reliable as we think like when you film something on a phone and it spits exactly back what it saw. There was supposed to be a video of this. This was very anticipated and it was going to be a game changer in the case. The fact that we don't have it now and we are left to rely on eyewitness testimony makes it all the more frustrating, but also more interesting. Does it does it hurt Sanderson that there that this video apparently existed and now it's mysteriously gone? I mean, does that reflect poorly on him, or you know, is that going to you know maybe help him because um, you know there is no video evidence of of what happened? No, it's definitely going to hurt him in the sense that you know when you when you say I have some you know ironclad evidence to make my case. And it's it's going to be you know slam dunk for me moving on in this trial, and then it's it's lost or it, it's irretrievable. I thought I had it; it got taped over and so forth. That really does hurt the credibility of a witness, and there will be some explaining to do on that point when Sanderton is questioned. And of course, it always captures the public's attention when a celebrity um, is involved in court proceedings. Does Gwyneth Paltrow's celebrity help or hurt her in this case? So it, it can go both ways. I think it really boils down to the merits of the case. If a celebrity like Gwyneth Paltrow has a strong case, then the public will corral around her, uh, like we saw with Johnny Depp and Amber Heard. So it, it seems so far that the case is going her way. The evidence is going in her favor, and that will only bolster her image and credibility in the court of public opinion. And one more level forward is, you know, Paltrow could have probably have easily settled this suit, right? For some nominal value for her, she's very successful. She probably has the capital not to be presumptuous, but she probably could have settled this. But I think she's taking the position that just because I can afford to settle, doesn't mean I'm gonna do it. You know, it, it shouldn't be that people can just take advantage of people that have the capital, of, that have worked hard for their funds and just need to make payouts to people who wanna sort of make a dime on them. And I think this is more about principle to her than anything else, but it remains to be seen what the outcome's going to be. Yeah, and of course she is counter suing, but just for one dollar and attorney's fees. So it does seem really like she is trying to to make a stand here. And of course our colleagues on Court TV will continue to follow this trial as we will be following along closely. Lou Shapiro, thank you so much for being with us tonight. Always great to be with you, Alexa. See you later. Coming up, lawmakers on both sides of the aisle are concerned about TikTok. Should you be? An expert joins us to discuss the intensifying scrutiny facing the app. I found something huge. Hey! 